We all suffer from procrastination, putting stuff off, moving on to something else, thinking, oh, we'll start that tomorrow. People aren't gonna like this, but I think technical founders, software developers, programmers, people like myself that come from a technical background are bigger procrastinators than most. And the reason being, a lot of technical folk are big procrastinators comes down to one reason. They think they know better, and I've been no different. I've been putting things off like recording this video, but the one thing I put off for over 10 years is actually starting a blog. So my story started back in 2008. So I started working as a software developer for a website hosting company. So all the technology that we needed to run, host, register domains was there. And in January 2008, I registered my website address, philiphughes.co.uk. And then a few months later, I registered a few smaller domains. So like philh.co.uk, that actually works as well going to, to the same website. And I was like, right, cool, really excited, got it up and running, it's gonna be my first website. And then I just put up a, a crappy holding page for about 12 months. And my goal was, right, okay, because I'm working in this software industry, I'm a software developer by trade, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around and build my own CMS, my own content management system that's gonna run my website off that. And yeah, it's gonna be all singing and dancing. And literally, the website sat there for about six years and I didn't do a thing just with these stupid little pictures of me on there from when I was on holiday in Thailand on Christmas, I think, with like a Christmas hat on and a t-shirt and shorts, standing in a pool tub, drinking a beer, and that, that, that was my website for years on end. It was ridiculous. And then what happened is I started making a conscious decision to do something. And it'd be around 2015, so we're still talking, you know, a good few years since I registered the domain. God knows how many times I've renewed the domain as well. Right, I'm going to get up and running, but what I'm going to do, I'm still going to tinker. I still want to tinker, I'm still going to have a play. I'm going to use a content management system. I'm going to then sort of play with that tinkering, create my own templates, do some more cool stuff. So it's 80% there, but then I can still play for 20%. And that was using a thing called Umbraco. So I got that up and running, I've got a few pages up there. I actually got the website into sort of a, a normal website. So it had an about us, a home page, a contact page. But guess what I did? Nothing. I didn't get any further. I didn't have one blog post published on there. And the whole point of registering this was to start a blog, to start promoting myself online. But I was still no further forward. Things finally changed at the start of 2018. So it's been 10 years since I registered the domain. And what I actually finally ended up doing was reading the book called Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V. Basically, I've just had to get out of my own way. And this is one of the things I've been I've been learning about being a, and being a developer and and having these technical skills, you don't necessarily need to use them all the time. So what I did was read the book and got rid of the Umbraco site, got rid of it completely and just registered with a simple WordPress hosting company and got the blog up and running. So I'd had all these content ideas and stuff I wanted to start blogging about and completely missed the boat when blogging was just literally you could post up a blog and you'd get thousands of views. But I still wanted to jump on it because I love written content and I just wanted to, to get stuff out there. And guess what my first blog post was? How it took me 10 years to start a blog. So at least I had content. But this is the thing I think sometimes we have the problem of. It's twofold, I think, personally, is if you're technical, you think you know better. I'm not going to use WordPress because it's poorly written or it's too bloated or there's little bit of security holes with it or this platform over here is quicker or I'm going to do something better. And you just, you just don't start. And then on the flip side, for people that aren't that technical, they then get scared that these platforms are going to be complicated to use and they're like, oh, well, I don't think I should use that because I don't know how to get started. I don't know how to get started. It just, just sounds too complicated. So there's kind of like the extremes of the procrastination where I know better, I don't know anything. And I think you've just got to go try and get into that middle ground. So if, you, if you're a developer, you need to back yourself off and go, actually, do I need to do 80% of this or can I just go and use a blogging platform, an email service provider, a, a no-code builder, for example. And then the same goes for if you're not technical, can I go and use something that's a drag and drop builder that gives me a website, gives me a software platform or things like Zapier that does all the automation for me. I don't know what to do in or I know too much. It's completely gone. And I think that is a massive skill that you need to do to get over procrastination. What are the things that you can use straight away that will get you to 80% of where you want to be? 
I'm really looking at the 80-20 analysis on myself at the moment and seeing how I can apply that to my life. And it's just a case of now, I'm trying to ban myself from writing code unless it's for an actual software product that I'm marketing and I'm gonna get money for. The rest of it is use tools that exist and use tools that are out there. If you do want to check out my blog that's actually been live for about five years now, go to philh.co.uk. I'm even sharing the link. I'll even put in the description this, the, the original blog post I wrote about how long it took me to start 